research project. It's a simple metaphor that sums up the core principle of academic research, namely that the work we do is built upon that of the scholars that came before us to allow us to know more and to see further. Imagine these puzzle pieces represent our knowledge of a particular subject, say evolution. Our understanding now is built upon the work of those that came before. Take Charles Darwin, for example. His work on the origin of the species, published in 1859, is widely regarded as the foundation of evolutionary biology. And because he conducted his work in an academic manner, making his sources and references transparent, explaining his methodologies and how he came to his conclusions, other scholars have been able to build upon that, expanding his theories and our understanding, as well as challenging them. And that isn't just limited to the one subject. There are thousands of giants that have developed ideas that we build upon. Take the story of Genesis in the Old Testament of the Bible, for example. That provides a very alternative view of evolution, that the world was created in six days. And other scholars have built upon that over time, developing theories like intelligent design and creationism. So try to keep this metaphor in mind at any point of an academic research project. Your project should not just be regurgitating the work of those that came before. We don't need someone else to just tell us what Darwin already has. You should be adding an original interpretation and your views. At the same time, we don't need it to be so original that it ends up up here, adrift of any of the research and scholarship that has come before. A good research project will look at the work of previous scholars, will build upon that, while adding original views and interpretations so that you get the opportunity to make an original contribution to the subject that interests you. A research administration office is important for the institution because it's really the entity that facilitates and coordinates research activities um, at the institution and if one thinks about a long-term involvement or investment in research or research outcomes you must have an entity at the university that is available and well equipped to handle um, grants and research and coordination of individuals um, otherwise what you will have is uh, individual research activities from scientific investigators um, that may be spread around the university um, taking on multiple roles. So for example, a principal investigator may also serve as uh, finding their own funding opportunities or trying to figure out how to uh, write the application or what are the important components or what are the um, policies and procedures of the funding agency all on their own. So they're wearing multiple hats of an investigator and an administrator and so they're a mile wide and an inch deep in terms of their expertise uh, which really doesn't bode well for the institution overall. So the Research Administration Office, or as we call it, the Office of Sponsored Programs, is really an important component if one wants to think about longevity, sustainability, coordination, accountability. Uh, so it's very key in terms of being involved in the bigger research enterprise. scientists are all going to be working on this one gigantic project and you know examples of those are particle physics experiments where you need a huge amount of capital and, and government funding is more towards more and more big science uh, and, and little science is kind of getting ignored. Small science is you know individual investigators or scientists um, thinking about a, an idea that that is very risky uh, you still don't know whether it warrants $50 million worth of investment in terms of further scientific inquiry, but uh, a little bit of money could go a long way. So um, when I visited Capitol Hill, I didn't feel that there was a lot of scientific ignorance going on, but more like political ideology as to how government funding and where government funding should be applied. So for example, when I described the project that we were working on at a time at, at, at UC Berkeley, and that was being commercialized by by Department of Energy into a real uh, company. Some of the people that we met in Capitol who thought that government should not be in the business of funding companies to make products. They thought that venture capitalists should. And my response to that was, well, if you if you visit run-of-the-mill, you know, Sand Hill Road venture capitalists in the in the Bay Area, 
they're mostly interested in social media kind of companies. Who, who's going to beat Facebook? Who's going to be the next Twitter? Who's going to be the next LinkedIn? Who's going to be the next Google, which has a huge advertising revenue? Um, and, and so there's two things there. One is smaller projects that have a bigger impact and a societal impact kind of get ignored. Uh, also, niche technologies that we can build on for, for future uh, things uh, will, will not thrive, will, will go away. A lot of the uh, things that we're reaping the benefit of today was because of the basic scientific research that we funded in, in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, so if we stop doing that kind of funding by the government, after a while, it, we just won't have anything to build on top of. We'll, we'll just be advertising and to each other and, and connecting with each other on social media, and that's, that's it. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's not where we want to end up. So th there is a role for government in terms of promoting uh, scientific research for both the sake of scientific research and also for commercializing those uh, scientific research. The government is the, is the only entity that can take a slightly longer point of view uh, in, in terms of these developments. But I think it, it's, it's good for, for, for that to happen because sometimes good ideas need a little bit of funding before they can become bigger ideas.